Listen to this, please. Will tarnish his legacy. He also said this. First of all, uh, we are already beginning the transition. We're well underway. And uh, the ability uh, for uh, the administration in any way by failure to recognize this our win uh, does not uh, change the dynamic at all in what we're able to do. We're going to be going and moving along in a, in a consistent manner, putting together our administration in the White House and reviewing who we're going to pick for the cabinet positions. And nothing's going to stop that. And, uh, and so I'm confident that uh, the fact that they're not willing to acknowledge we won at this point is uh, not of much consequence in our planning and what we're able to do between now and January 20th. Those remarks coming as President Trump continues to undermine the legitimacy of the entire electoral process and delay this transition of power. And while the president keeps making false claims about voter fraud, top Republican leaders are enabling him. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will not acknowledge President-elect Biden's victory. You heard him here this time yesterday saying Trump is, quote, within 100 percent within his rights to challenge the results. And just this morning, uh, Senator McConnell went further saying there is no cause for alarm and and if there is a new administration, he says the transition will happen at the appropriate time. And just to add on to that now, this afternoon, I want you to hear what uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo just told reporters when he was asked if the State Department will cooperate with the Biden transition. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. <laughs> all right, we're, we're ready. The, the world is watching what's taking place here. We're gonna count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. You heard him, a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. And then the president also is getting support from his attorney general, Bill Barr, who is once again weaponizing the Department of Justice. This after he told federal attorneys to investigate those unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud. Let's start with you, Arlette Sines. They are live in Wilmington, uh, Delaware. And so starting with the, the president, we're going to end it right there. I want to say something personally to my viewers in regards to this sick, sick environment that has been cast over the American people since Donald Trump has become in power. It's one thing to do something in the format that you're trying to gain popularity over a political vote. And it's another thing to do what he's doing right now, which is trying to destroy the very integrity of our elected electoral system here in America. At first, I made claims that if I could, I would charge the President of the United States of reckless endangerment based around how that he handled the coronavirus. Now I'm beginning to wonder if those charges need to be upgraded from reckless endangerment to basically uh, manslaughter or intentionally wanting to stir up stuff here in America in regards of being in denial about the electrical votes. There reaches a time for the betterment of we the people that you have to recognize this is how the system works. And if the current president of the United States on the elected inauguration day, which is, I believe, January the 20th, chooses not to acknowledge that he has been defeated, that's fine. There's nothing in the law books that says that he has to do that. But on the 21st of January, after the elected Biden becomes president, which right now he's not the president, he's only the elected president. But after he becomes president, he can give out the order of having Trump 
and everybody associated with Trump arrested for whatever charge, probably for trespassing, but he can have them physically removed from the White House because as of January the 21st, Trump will no longer be the president, but he will be an ex-president. And yes, Homeland Security and their agreements has to protect Donald Trump pertaining to his life because that's part of the part of the package but they don't have to protect him from being arrested they don't have to protect him from all the legal legalities that may may uh, come his way after January the 20th because that's whenever everything changes and it basically does a completely flop or a rollover to the point that the President of the United States will no longer be President Trump now, if he wants to do something illegal, something similar towards how Abraham Lincoln did, towards standing up to abolish supposedly slavery, then we're talking about basically a civil war. Because whenever you have somebody that has been elected by the people, after that exchange is over with, you're no longer under that same guideline. Now you're walking on thin ice and a, and a Biden wants to have the president arrested for, like I said, whatever reason. And this includes Pompeo. This includes uh, all of them up there in the cabinet members right now that are basically showing their rear ends. Uh, he can do so. So I'm very, very convinced at this point in time that things will fall in the line the way that they're supposed to in regard to the elected president of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden. And once more, we want to congratulate him and his party and what that they have proven and shown themselves worthy of doing, which is standing up for the integrity of we the people in this legal election that went on in the year of the Jubilee in 2020. Good luck to all of us, and once more, Shalom. People need to quit playing games, regardless whether it's the President of the United States currently, or it's other people that's associated with the judicial um, justice system they need to quit playing games before all this winds up backfiring on them in the degree towards a lot of people going to jail in other words if he won't go voluntarily he'll be forced to go involuntarily he'll be forced to go forcefully and it will be sad to watch a president of the United States be hauled out of the White House in handcuffs It'll be sad. But the way that it's looking right now, if they continue to want to uh, play this game in this um, in this uh, standoff, the way it's looking right now, he very well may be hauled out of the pre out of the White House in handcuffs. And that could not only go for the president, but that could go for all of them. Once the power rolls over, once it flips, it's over. It's over. The people have spoken. God bless America, and God bless those who are pulling towards the ways of righteousness, justice, and the laws of the land. Thank you for allowing for me to speak and... Good luck.